everyone, I'm Nicole and I'm the Canadian Nickel. And today I am making this little tiny box and we're gonna be stuffing some candy inside it. Uh, you're gonna need some cardstock and some acetate or clear uh, cardstock. Well, it's acetate really, but I call it clear cardstock. Um, and I'm gonna have all the tutorial for you on my blog and that little squeaking you hear in the background is my puppy. He's just woken up from his nap. So I'm gonna shoot him outside, give him some lunch and I'm gonna get back to this fun little project. Here's the little man that's making all that squeaky noise. He's just woken up from his nap and interrupting my project. And I think he's ready to go outside. Okay, so you're gonna need a piece of three inch by three inch uh, piece of cardstock. You're gonna need two of them because you're gonna make a bottom and a top for your little box. And you're gonna score half an inch in on each side. And then you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut two spots and then cut again on the opposite side. So then you make these little flaps. And then you're gonna take some of your super sticky tape, put a little bit of tape on there, and you're gonna tape it all up so you can get this box topper. When it comes to the acetate, you're gonna need a strip of acetate eight and a quarter by three and a half. Um, and then what you need to do is you need to score it at 1 and 15 sixteenths. Now that means nothing to me and um, basically that's just slightly under the two inch mark. So along the long length, the eight and a quarter length, you want to score just under two inches all the way along. So you're going to get one, two, three, four big chunks and then you're going to have one little one at the very end. All right, I've done the two box tops and I've gone and put my super sticky tape all the way on the outside of the acetate paper and you want to make sure you do what I didn't do it first you want to make sure that the sticky tape goes on the outside of all of your score lines not on the inside because I had to peel it all off that's what I get for not reading ahead so now I'm just gonna pull off this tape on the inside of this little flap there's the one tiny little flap that's gonna be left I'm gonna pull this off off this corner just a bit because these two are going to connect. So you want to make sure that the folds connect together. And then it makes a nice little square for your little topper to go on. And then you're going to pull off the bottom piece and now you've got this bottom piece ready to tuck in here. Okay, so the little box is starting to take shape. Uh, you're gonna need to cut two strips of pattern paper. They call for um, half an inch strip, but I did an inch strip because I wanted to do this graveyard uh, border punch along. So I did one inch by eight and a quarter inches, and then you're gonna stick uh, your adhesive on it all the way across the strip and then you're just going to wrap it all the way around your box and then you're going to want to take your lid put it onto your box and then mark in the center where you want to punch because we're going to run some ribbon through there so I've marked mine already with two little black dots and then I've got my little puncher thing here now that I've punched my two holes out into the acetate paper I'm ready to put the adhesive on the top of the box for this little border and it's going to overlap just a little bit which is fine okay so a little mistake so what i should have done before i punch the holes into the box i should have put my designer paper on first because that would have been smart but that's okay sometimes stuff like that happens so you just roll with it Okay, so I fixed my little problem. Um, the great thing about these kind of punches is you can just see exactly where your hole is, so you just had to, I just had to pop it in there. So I've got some of these yummy chocolates. These are the Lindor pumpkins, and I love these. So I'm gonna pop a couple in here. You wanna try and make sure the little faces are sticking out as best you can. 
Probably get five in there. Let's see. Yep, I squeezed in five. So there's their little pumpkin faces. And then I'm just going to grab the ribbon and run it through. Now that I have my ribbon all pulled through and the lid is nice and securely on, that's the way the box is going to look like. And then I'm going to be adding these digi images from Simply Betty Stamps. Uh, they are her new line of spooky hollow and they're totally spooky. So I'm just going to stick him here. And then I'm going to flip it over and you can see all the little pumpkins. And then I'm going to put Spiderella here. Taper on. And then you can just tie off the top. And unlike when we put the bottom on, we taped the outside of the acetate um, paper so it would stick to the bottom and hold all that yummy candy. But you're not going to want to do that on the top of the box so that when you give it away as a gift, um, people aren't ripping it all, all apart to get to the the yummy candy. So you just want to make sure that it just slides on. You just have to work with it. Because I use this um, uh, graveyard punch from Martha Stewart, it was a little harder because all the little tombstones kept hooking up as they were going in. Right, and then you just tie a little knot at the top with your cute Halloween ribbon. And there's the box all finished. And what a nice little gift that would make. It actually didn't take too, too long, especially if I'd read the instructions ahead of time. So there's my little acetate box full of Halloween candy uh, with my Simply Betty Stamps new uh, Spooky Hollow images. And I hope you enjoyed this little project. I'll have the tutorial up for you. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.